Hi, welcome to my channel, Crafting with Lee Marie. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. So today what I'm going to show you is how I kit up a diamond painting. Um, in my last video, which I'll put up in the eye, um, you saw me unbox Isle of Palms by Chuck Pinson, and it was a de Dreamer Designs kit. Um, and so now I'm going to show you what I do to get my kit ready to go. And so there's several things that go into this. And one is getting all of these beautiful, beautiful rhinestones ready. Um, and one way I do that is that I use this case. And I love this case because it zips. Um, so you can close it and keep all your diamonds safe inside. Um, it has a nice pocket here where I put my extra diamonds that I'm not using. And then it has 60 compartments. And these are about two inches tall. And so they actually hold quite a bit of beads. Um, and as you can see, since you're looking at this, I number mine from one to 60. Some people like to use the sticker stickers and they cut them out and they put them on top so they can see the symbol. Um, for me, that's just a lot of work and I don't have time for it. Um, so I do by number and I put my beads in order for the number that um, you see on the strip of paper. Now, what's nice is that this key is the same that's on your canvas. And so when I'm going through my canvas and I see my symbol, I just look over. So like if I'm looking for that pink P, I can see that it's number 21. So I'm just gonna come over here and grab 21 and use those beads. I tried using a label maker and going by the DMC numbers. Um, I had a hard time finding the DMC, so that didn't work well for me. I also tried using these stickers and when I'm excited about a diamond painting, I found that I just did not want to sit here and cut all these stickers out. When I'm de-kitting, I'll, I'll do it. Um, I'll use these to de-kit my projects. Um, I typically will watch YouTube or Netflix um, and just kind of de-kit it so I can do my next one. But when I'm kitting up something, I get so excited and I don't want to wait. So um, we are going to go in order from 1 to 55. Um, so there are 55 colors in this kit and so they come in these long, sorry for the crinkling, they come in these long, whoops, they come in these long strips. Okay. Now you can see, or maybe you can't see, but they are slightly, uh, perforated. Um, I have a hard time ripping these and I tend to notice that the plastic rips too. And so I actually go ahead and I just cut these all up. So I'm going to speed up the camera um, as I edit, but I'm going to go ahead and cut these all up and I'm going to keep them in order. Um, so that way it's really easy to go one through 10 because it starts at one here and it ends at the number 10. And you do have to kind of pay attention because some of these colors do get repeated. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these up. That way I don't rip any of my gems. Okay, so I've kept these all in order. And so what I will typically do is I'll line them up like this, just real quick. Um, and get them ready to go. And then I tend to like to pull my containers out. It's just a preference thing. Some people don't, some people do, but I put them in order so they're easy to grab. Um, and then what I do is I actually go into my kit. I'm gonna grab out the bags because I might need those. Um, I can see number five is a very full bag, so it's very unlikely it's going to fit all in here. And then what else, the other thing I pull out is I pull out my boat. Um, and the reason why is I learned the hard way that pouring into the cylinder with the bag doesn't work well. And so what I do is I'll take the lid off the cylinder and I'm going to go ahead and kind of scoot these down a little bit so you guys can definitely see what I'm doing. Um, so what I do is I unscrew the lid. 
I cut off my corner right here and then I just pour them in. Oh, these are just so pretty. And you can see right there that I actually have a little, little hitchhiker, but these are very pretty and they glitter so nicely. So they're gonna look really pretty on the canvas. Um, as I go, I could take the little hitchhiker out now or I can take it out later. And so I'm just gonna actually choose to take it out later. And so all I do is I pour these in um, and I, just like this, I think I might've lost one. Oh, oop. And if you drop one, it's okay. You can just pick it up and put it back in. Not a huge deal. Okay. Um, oh, this is a new tray, so it's just not sliding well. So, and then I put my lid on and I put it back and then I keep going down and I go down the line and then I'll do the next couple. Okay. So again, I'm gonna probably speed it up to save some time because I am sure you guys do not wanna sit here and watch me for an hour kitting these up. These big kits, they do take a long time to kit up. Um, but like I said, it's fun to watch Netflix or other YouTubers. Um, I've been watching lately, I've been watching um, Crafty, or not crafting, um, Rachel Ray. I do love to watch Rachel Ray. Um, she's great. Stitcherista's fun. I also watch um, Mrs. Crochet and Coffee. She's a hoop. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show that this one is, pr this boat's pretty full. And so there's a good chance that this won't all fit. So I'll show you what I do when that happens. And so sometimes it's hard to get these out. So I actually use my, oopsie, spill. And that happens too. <laughs> Even with the boat, sometimes that happens. It's okay, not a big deal. But as you can see, these are quite full. Um, this was a big bag. And so I'm not gonna be able to get all of those in. Luckily they all spilled on my table and not on my floor. <laughs> If you haven't spilt diamonds on the floor, just give it time. It'll happen. It's happened to me and many other people. I think it's like a rite of passage um, for diamond painting. You can't say you're a real diamond painter until you've spilt them all over the floor. I remember when I was doing my first Dreamer Designs kit, I kept spilling them all over my floor and I was getting so mad. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to, since I have all these extra gems that will not fit in, is I'm going to pull out some of my bags. Um, and so I'm gonna pull out my bag and this is where I do end up cutting and getting in there. Um, and the reason why is because I'm probably going to have extras of this color anyways. Um, Dreamer Designs gives you more than enough um, rhinestones or drills, whatever you choose to call them. Um, they give you more than enough and so I tend to put the stickers on the bags as I need them. That way I can just keep going. Um, one thing I will say is I have a very hard time, even with nails, getting the clear plastic coating off the back of these ones. Um, so you're gonna watch me struggle here for a second, I'm sorry. Um, I've always struggled with the Dreamer Designs ones. There we go. Oh, no, tease me. I don't know if you guys struggle like this. I can see it. <laughs> oh, come on. It knows I'm recording. It's like it's gonna tease me on this. There we go. Oh boy. So, and so I just stick it on there. And then I pour these gems in. And I'm just spilling them all over the place tonight. Oh boy. 
Okay. One thing that's nice about the rhinestones, if you spill them on your table, it's really easy to just go ahead and pick them up with your finger. It's not hard. And so then what I do is I have these extras. It's labeled with the symbol, with the number. And so I take them and I just put them in my top pocket here. And then I move on. And I'm actually, because I'm having issues with this boat, I'm going to switch to a different white boat I have. Um, this one is my favorite. I got it off of Amazon in one of those accessory kits where you can buy like a bunch of starter accessories. I bought it when I was first diamond painting and it's my favorite. Um, see, <laughs> they just slide right in. Um, and I, I have found that once you find a kit that works for you, or find a, um, a, a drill tray that works for you, it's really hard to use anything else. I can tell you that right now. At least it is for me. Um, I love this little one. I wish I had it in a bigger, bigger one, uh, bigger size. It says Mosfa on the back. I need a Mosfa, like a giant one. Um, I have some of the bigger white ones. Um, but they're just really, really hard for me to use um, because I, I spill them everywhere when I'm trying to, oh, there I, I was a little too ambitious. I spill them everywhere when I'm uh, trying to put them in the container. This one is not as bad as you can see. And I mean, I fit half a full bag of drills in here, so that isn't too bad. And like I said, I'm not too concerned about spilling the Dreamer Designs ones as much because they do have their uh-oh policy. Um, I obviously, when I do spill them, I try to clean them up because I don't want to have to wait for drills. Um, so yeah. Oh, here we go. I'm gonna struggle here again. It's just these ones. I don't know. I also have done, uh, let's see, Diamond Art Club. They do stickers with their um, kits too. I don't struggle with those ones. There we go. Didn't struggle quite as hard this time. It's just the, I think it's because they use a clear plastic and it's very, it's very fine, um, very, very thin is the word I'm looking for. Um, and so it's really hard to get a good grip under it. And so these ones I'm just gonna pour in there. And there we go. And so I'm gonna finish up and then I will, if I think of anything that I want to mention, I will go ahead and slow down my video and I'll let you guys know. Um, one thing I do want to say before I speed this up to finish kitting up all of these is that, um, this tray, I will link it down below this, uh, storage case. If you're interested in it, I'll link it down below. Um, I got it off of Amazon and Amazon shipping has actually gone. It's, it's improved quite a bit. It was taking forever to get things there for a while. Um, but when I bought it back in May, I paid $26.99 for it. It's now $30.99, but I personally feel like it's worth it. I love the fact that they screw, the lids screw on. I found that the other storage containers that snap on, like the little square ones and whatnot, if you drop them and you drop them on a hard surface, your beads go everywhere. So, um... I will link that down below in the video description. So you're going to see me speed up here and I'm going to get the rest of these kitted up. Okay, so as you can see here, I have 
two thirteens. I almost didn't catch that at first when I was lining everything up, but out of the corner of my eye, I saw a 20 here and I was like, huh, that's weird because I have 20 here. So that should be my next 10. So it's really important to pay attention to your numbers and make sure that they're lining up. My 13 here lines up with my 13 there. I have two 13s. I don't need both. So I'm actually not even going to open both. I'm going to put one right in there and then we'll just open this one and we'll see if they all fit. I don't know. They're not quite as full. This 13 is not quite as full as some of the other ones that I had to put a bag in. Okay, so we are almost there. I've got four bags left. I can tell they're not gonna fit in here and I'm kind of disappointed because Dreamer Designs, they tend to say that they give us enough baggies for all of our colors. Well, I had to pull into my stash and I didn't even do bags for all of them. Um, so I'm a little disappointed by that claim. So obviously they do not provide bags for every color because I've only done colors on about half of them. Um, so I'm going to finish these up real quick and then I'll show you how many are left over. Thank you for hanging in there. Um, I would say, I don't know exactly how long this has taken me because um, I can't see my phone, my device as I'm recording, but I would say that it's probably taken me close to an hour to kit these up. Um, and I went ahead and just labeled these last ones because it's very obvious that they're not going to all fit. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching some of my uh, most spectacular spills ever as I'm kitting up this kit. Um, I have never spilled so many drills when I'm kitting up a kit. I don't know what is going on tonight as I'm recording. It's kind of crazy to be perfectly honest. Um, I just keep spilling them and I don't know why. Oh my goodness. Okay. So after I'm done kitting up my kit here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I actually do to the canvas. Um, so the canvas comes and I'll show you guys in a minute or two when I'm done with this. The canvas comes with a clear cover. Now, as I'm sure you guys, if you've done diamond painting before, or if you're a beginner, um, the diamonds, uh, come in a crinkly paper and that's kind of the sound that the, uh, clear cover makes and I don't really like that sound too much I mean it doesn't bug me bug me but it gets annoying trying to tame it I guess you could say um and so what I do is I actually take that clear paper off and I cover it with these release papers which I'll show you in a minute um you can get the release papers on Amazon or AliExpress if you feel like waiting for them um Another thing that some people will use is non-stick parchment paper. And from what I have read, I've never used it, so I cannot say, yes, go ahead, use non-stick parchment paper. But from what I have read, um, basically use the name brand, basically, you know, like Reynolds or something like that. Um, it's got to be the non-stick. If you don't get, if it doesn't say non-stick, it's going to ruin your painting. Um... But anyways, you can use that and cut that into squares. Um, now, oh, see, there I go spilling them again. Um, and like I said, you can cut them into squares. For me, I personally, I'm like, why am I going to cut them into squares when I can buy the squares already cut up? And I know they're not going to ruin my paper. So I choose to buy the release papers. It's kind of like a non-stick parchment paper, but it's not. I, I think it's like covered with silicone, um, but it works really well. Um, 
And so I use them and it kind of partitions my painting into manageable squares. Some people like to paint the whole thing, like they like to work on their whole canvas at one time. For me, I tried that once. I got very overwhelmed. Um, so that doesn't work for me. Um, this hobby is something that kind of helps me de-stress and wind down. Um, and so I don't want to do anything that's going to stress me out even more. And so I had a hard time hunting for the symbols because I like to work a color at a time within whatever section I'm working on. And I'll typically start at, you know, number one and I'll work my way all the way through 55. And obviously within that section, there may be a color that may not, there may not be. Um, so it really just depends. Uh, but I personally choose to work in these small sections and kind of work. And so these are the AB diamonds that come with the kit. Um, you can see they have that iridescent coating on them. Beautiful. And so um, this kit only has one AB. I was really surprised. I was I thought there'd be like some white ABs in there or whatnot, but there wasn't, just the yellow. Um, so I'm really curious to see where the yellow is going to be. And there I go, spilling them again. <laughs> Alrighty, so here we go, 55 colors all kitted up, ready to go. And so like I said at the beginning of my video, I like to go in order with the numbers um, on my key, which is on the canvas. Um, and that's just what works best for me. What's great about diamond painting is you can do what's best for you. Um, and it may be something different than what's best for me. And so I have this big bag um, left over from what the diamonds were in. And so I go ahead and just put all of these extras in. I will need them eventually. Um, and you can always buy more of these extra bags. I like to keep all of my drills separate when I am de-kitting my kits because I like to make sure if I'm going to need a color, um, for another canvas that the lot dye, the dye lot matches. Um, does me no good if the dye lot doesn't match. Alrighty, so I'm going to show you here what I have. And so these are all of the extras, um, quite a few. I've never had, and I just kind of shove them in there. Um, I've never had quite this many extras. And so sometimes when I'm getting low on my colors down here, I'll line up the extras on the desk and kind of refill my kit. But that's that. Um, and so, I'm gonna set this aside and I'm going to go ahead and get my canvas and show you guys how I put those release papers on. Okay, so I got my kit or my canvas all out. Um, it's lying relatively flat. It's still curling at the edge here a little bit, but as I work this canvas, it's going to relax. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna show you how I do the release papers at this point. Um, you're not going to be able to see the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit of it. And then I'm going to do the whole kit. And then I'll bring you back to see what it looks like. Um, this canvas is very hard to show you the whole thing just because it is so big. Um, I honestly, I think this kit when I do it is going to take me, well, I'll, I'll be starting on it maybe tonight or tomorrow. But it's going to take me a good month or so to do just because it's so large. So what I do as I take this plastic and I'm very carefully going to roll it out and uncover part of my canvas. Now these are the release papers I was talking about. Um, you can get them on Amazon. I will go ahead and link some down below in the description box of what I have bought. Um, and I'm just, and you can tell some of these I reuse like, so, um, but the hair kind of, that was a little kitty cat hair, um, but it rubs right off. Um, and so I've used these before, um, and you can keep reusing them, which is why I choose to do this versus the parchment paper. Um, and so what I do is I make sure 
not sure. Um, I make sure my sticky doesn't go over the edge and it doesn't do that so much here. I just can't get this bottom corner here. So I'm going to go ahead and I just kind of start lining them up with the grids on the canvas and putting them down. So you can see right there. And I do overlap them just a little bit, um, just to make sure the canvas is fully covered. That canvas is very sticky. Um, and some of these are a different size because I bought them in different batches. Um, so they're not all by the same company. And so, yeah, I just go ahead and I stick these down. Um, everybody has a different preference. Some people like to do these parchment squares or, I mean, these, uh, release squares like I do. Some people like to do the clear plastic. It's just, it's all personal preference on what you like to do. Um, I just, I knew really quickly that the <laughs> clear plastic would not work for me. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this, get this all done, and I'll show you what it looks like when it is done. Okay, so that only took me like five minutes to do. Um, it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be because I'm going to peel them off anyways. But this is what the canvas looks like when it's got the parchment squares all over it. Or these aren't parchment squares. I'm sorry, the release papers. I will show you what it looks like under the light pad. Um, so one thing, you can still see the colors through your light pad. So um, that's why I like using this. I mean, because a lot of people like to see what's coming next with their canvases um and I personally like to see it as well but um I can see it through these so this is just something I like um so thank you for seeing how I kit up a diamond painting this one did take quite a bit longer than it normally does because this is the largest diamond painting I've ever done if you liked what you saw today please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and um, subscribe to my channel to see more great videos like this. I'm just getting started, but I have lots of great ideas, um, to share with the diamond painting community. Have, uh, have a great day guys. I will see you next time. Bye.